We're moving on now to something we've talked about many times on the show, single-use plastic, because in yesterday's spring statement, the Chancellor called for a consultation on a potential plastic tax. Now, together with standardising collections, it's the kind of coordinated action that recycling companies have been calling for, and supermarkets and councils back it too. But where do the people who actually make the stuff stand? <laughs> We've kind of been demonised as producers of this poison that's, you know, killing the country. It seems to be almost like a, a panic at the moment. These people all work in an industry that, almost overnight, has become socially unacceptable. I can't watch the TV. You know, I can't even tell my friends who I work for. It can be pretty embarrassing at times. Plastico, the family-run company they work for, has been making plastic for almost 70 years and now produces 100 million single-use plastic tumblers every year. I don't think it's the enemy. I think it's the way that some people misused it. Sales manager John Reeves contacted The One Show to defend his industry. So I'm here at his plastics factory in Northampton to hear his argument that plastic needn't be the environmental scourge that some say it is. So one of the core products we've got is the flexiglass. We've got a capability of making a million of these glasses a day. May I? Yes. This is disposable, yeah, designed use. to be used one time only. Yeah. How is that defensible, given everything we know about plastic pollution? These are used at many, many different occasions, at large-scale sporting events, music festivals. The reason it's used is it's absolutely fit for purpose, and it doesn't present any danger to any member of the public. Why not use a paper cup? The difficulty you've got with a paper cup is you're left with the same problem. A paper cup typically has got a plastic interior, which means that the product is difficult to recycle. Plastico knows its market, but crucially, it also understands it has a responsibility to ensure the cups it manufactures don't end up in landfill. We've developed a program where we can actually get these cups back and recycle them and reuse the material again. We work in large-scale music events, festivals, sporting arenas. So what we're proposing is we're designing recollection centres and recycling centres that can go in the concourse of these grounds. At the end of these events, we're going along scooping all of these glasses up, bringing them back, reprocessing them, remanufacturing and actually making the product into something that can be useful. Our ultimate goal is to take the cup, use it, it comes back here and we make it back into a cup. This is what's called closed loop recycling, reprocessing used plastic and remanufacturing it into other products. Although the company can't yet do that itself, it recently started working with Harm Plastics in Manchester. Amongst the products that we manufacture here are outdoor furniture, decking boards, bollards, retaining wall structures, and all of them are made from 100% recycled plastic. If we use plastic cups as an example, it would typically take 22,000 to make a garden bench and 48,000 to make a typical picnic table. But not all manufacturers are reusing plastic in this way, and recycling companies like Viridor believe the government should be putting regulations in place to help make this happen. I think the important thing to remember with plastic recycling is that everyone's got a part to play. You or I go into the supermarket and we buy a shampoo bottle off the shelf. We put the packaging in the recycling. It comes to a company like Viridor. We take it back to its raw material and we can supply it to a client that can then produce that into a new uh, product that can go back on the supermarket shelves. That's how the system should work. And that's where we think that the government needs to step in. And they need to make sure that we get it right from the start and that retailers and consumer brands are designing products for recyclability. We should really be saying, if you're a consumer brand or a retailer and you want to do business in this country, you must include a minimum amount of recycled material in your packaging. It's a resource, it's not rubbish. And we want to keep it out of our oceans, off our beaches, and put it back in the British economy where it belongs. The government says it will be working with the plastics industry to reform regulations and to incentivise producers to take greater responsibility for the environmental impact of their products. Back on the factory floor, John's keen to show me the finished product. So here they 
become the end of the line, and we say it's the end of the line, but you don't want it to be the end of the no, line. No, no, this is actually the start of the line, really. What we want to be able to do is make sure that we can get as many of these cups, if not all of these cups, back, and we can actually get them back into the recycling programme. This could potentially be big news for all of us, as this type of low-grade, single-use plastic is currently one of the most difficult to find a market for. So I hope we get bins like this at major sporting events, concerts, festivals really soon. Thank you, Lucy.